Hello, welcome to the first episode of Don't Get Your Hopes Up. I am Myla, and sitting next to me is Kate. Say hi, Kate. Hello, everybody. Um, today, um, this is the first episode ever of the podcast. If this, by some miracle, gets released, hello, welcome to the first episode. Today, we want to complain about cars. That's right, cars. They're problems. You drive one. <laughs> you drive one. You do drive <laughs> that's one. The, that's the ex- extent, yeah. You drive one really uh, grinds my gears like the trend. Trans, uh, I, I, I'm going to be real honest. I sat down to talk about cars for 45 minutes, and I barely know like what a car is or what it does. So my dad happens to know a lot about cars, um, and I'm pretty close with my dad, which means that through like osmosis, I know a decent amount about cars. Thank and God. then in case um, anyone who's listening to this because they know me doesn't know already, I'm a bit autistic. And by a bit, I mean really. And so sometimes I'll do things like see a funny label at the pump at a gas station and call my dad and say, (laughs) Dad, I saw this label at the gas station. What does it mean? And he'll be like, how long do you have? And I'm like, I'm (laughs) driving for another hour. And my my dad will go off in an impromptu. So like, if you want to know about like an internal combustion engine or the difference between a gasoline and a diesel engine... Or, like, some other weird niche thing. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, so, it's really fun. Like, one of the most fun things a dad can possibly say is, I think it's about time I got another project car. Oh, God. No. Oh, because I, uh... my dad spends a lot of time out in his garage. It's got one of those car mechanic pits, which means that there's just, like, you walk in, And then you're like, hey, what are these rickety boards doing? And it turns out there's like an eight foot, it's just an eight foot drop into a greasy pit. Right? That you can like drive your car over and then go down and be under there working on your car without needing to hoist your car up on a lift like they have at more professional mechanic locations. Dude, every house with a child in it should just have a grease pit in the garage for their children to play in. Okay, so once upon a time when my brother was like eight... Um, he went out into the backyard with a shovel for a couple days in a row, (laughs) and he ended up digging a pit that was about mm, two feet by two feet by four feet. Okay, okay. Pretty decent-sized pit. Yeah. And we're rural. Um, and so this ended up becoming the lard pit. (laughs) And so, so, like, you know how, like, you might end up with, like bacon grease yeah of course right what are you gonna Wait, do how much bacon grease do you have that you need a pit for your bacon grease? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting there i'm getting there so bacon grease but then in general there's just some stuff that like what are you gonna do with it you can't throw it out you can't put it down the drain especially if um like us you don't have what's the name of the monster that lives in the bottom of your sink and eats stuff Garbage disposal. If you you don't have a garbage disposal and you have, like, leftover soup, what are you going to do with that? Right? Can't throw it away. Can't pour it down the drain. I honestly thought you could just pour it down the drain. (laughs) Like, you can, depending. Like, you probably could, we couldn't. Got you. Um, And so the answer then uh, is lard pit. Okay, okay. So, yeah, every little boy should have a lard pit, <laughs> and some of them do. But anyway, my dad spends a lot of time out in the garage. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I'll go and hang out with him, um, and he'll be listening to, I don't know, Red Hot Chili Peppers, or he'll be listening to a podcast about ponds that are between a third of an acre and two acres in size. <laughs> <laughs> something (laughs) yeah like it's that specific of course okay you'll be like oh listen to this great episode it's about uh the microscopic algae symbiotic relationships and i'll be like sounds fun but anyway i'll I'll go into the garage see what he's working on and he'll be like hey kate great join me joining me in the garage welcome welcome 
Do you want something to work on? Do you, do you want a drink? I've got a beer or Capri Suns, <laughs> 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 which is just how you know dads are, or at least how my dad is. And so by proxy, I've picked up like a lot of weird stuff about cars, like whether that's like opinions or just cars that I know I like. But yeah, um, in terms of cars, I'm a bit more basic. Um, I know how to drive a car. I don't know how to navigate my car. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm a very, very cautious driver. Never, never speed. Um, I I would never speed for two hours straight on the highway going back to St. Louis. Um, so yeah, um, I I barely understand anything about cars. I know I put my little foot on the pedal and it goes forward. I can turn the wheel if I hit the brakes, if I want to slow down for some reason. I'm, um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that you drive an automatic transmission. I do. Yeah. It's, listen. Mind reader over here. It's, that's crazy. How'd you know that? Um, <laughs> no, actually, it isn't manual. I just kind of ignore the <laughs> the, the thing. Like, I, it's complicated. <clears throat> I just, you know. It's like, okay, do you know anything about the Warhammer 40K universe, right? <laughs> what is the transition? Yeah, you just you just think your car should be going forward. And so it does. It's not actually, um, not actually, <laughs> if anyone, it's a theft-proof, Grand Theft Auto, completely invulnerable. Anyone else tries to get in and they, they like, turn turn the ignition and they're like, huh. And they pop the hood and they find out the ignition isn't even hooked up <laughs> to the engine in any way. Like, forget about a broken spark plug. There's no spark plug. <laughs> so I honestly, for a long time, thought the spark plug was what you called the cigarette lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, yeah, look at that spark plug chilling there. Yeah. That's so weird that people just had like, hey, here's this really hot things sticking out of your car so I can, like, smoke in my car. That's... So safe. So safe. They are kind of cool, though. Top top tier car safety. Speaking of uh, cars catching on fire, though... <laughs> Electric you... cars? I'm just... The Teslas confuse me <laughs> so much. Just from, like, a safety standpoint. Like, how do those things pass any sort of like safety standard inspection it's so i know there is a big like quality scandal. quality control here if you've got a car that catches on fire frequently and easily and you can't get in or out of that car without the car being running and the battery is so flammable that you need a special container to put out the car do you know and how long it windows takes to put out an electric break. car battery fire? It's like 10 hours or something, it's isn't it? It's fucking longer than that. It is absurd. But it's a, it's just a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, You it's... think it's the opposite of, you know how, well, maybe you don't. But frequently, when you're working with dangerous or important things that you design, you'll design safety redundancies to make sure that you don't get trapped in a car that's on fire and the doors can't open and the windows don't break. Yeah, um, I, I like, remember seeing this a while back. Getting out of a Tesla that is on fire is absurdly difficult. Like, people were talking about it. It's some super weird catch that's, like, underneath the seat and isn't clearly labeled. And the only way to, like, really, like, know about it is to, like read the car instruction manual like some kind of fucking nerd but like when you're when your car's on fire you're not gonna be like okay uh how do step i get out of my one, car open oh. the glove box <laughs> step two get out the little manual yeah open the manual okay uh 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 uh, uh, uh um where's where's the little lever thing okay it's it's under the seat like i i don't know it's like you're gonna need a phillips head screwdriver <laughs> Follow your IKEA instructions to escape the car that's actively on fire. While we're doing Tesla slander, there's another really funny thing about Teslas. When it detects a crash is about to happen, it shuts off autopilot about like half a second to a second before, so they can't be held liable because autopilot wasn't on during the crash. Want to hear something else really funny about Tesla autopilot? What's that? So Tesla's sensors are horrific. 
they're terrible. Yes. It's pretty much just a little camera. <laughs> like, no radar or anything. And so there's been a problem with self-driving Teslas um, when stop signs are larger than average. <laughs> the Tesla thinks it's just closer. <laughs> <laughs> like... And I'm imagining this problem in reverse. Like, what if I have little traffic cones? And the Tesla's like, that's not small. That's just far away. <laughs> oh, um, I saw a clip on Twitter this week where Teslas have no idea what the hell a train is. So, like, this guy... Fortunately, I know what a train is. I'm sure you do, buddy. Um... <laughs> Autistic person know anything about trains? Look, I like more trains to the extent think. that my other autistic friends think that I'm pretty weirdly obsessed with trains. Okay, that's kind of scary. But yeah, um, Tesla doesn't know what a train is. There's like the center camera where it like shows like what the Tesla thinks is around it. You know, like stop signs coming up, pedestrians, other cars. So this guy was stopped while a train was you know going across the little intersection thing. The guy, like, points his, like, you know, little phone camera down the dashboard and it's like, yo, look at what my camera thinks the train is. And it's just, like, 20 trucks merged into each other crossing the road. I once saw a truck, like, a semi-truck um, on a train. On a train? On a train, which was pretty cool. I'm not talking about, like, the intermodal shipping containers. I'm talking about, like, a vehicle on top of one of the little train car platforms. Interesting. Being shipped. Huh. Isn't that interesting? There's, it's fascinating. Did you know that there are trains that cars can ride on? Like drive on? No, like you get on. Oh. You get on. You, <laughs> like, like you drive, like like a ferry almost. Oh, okay. So like kind of. you want that? Um, so that way you can get from point A to point B that are really far apart and then be able to drive around town in point B. Got you. Okay, that's kind of smart. Isn't that cool? While speaking of ways to get your car from point A to point B and on the subject of continually um, berating Tesla, um, <laughs> the Hyperloop, quite oh possibly the funniest thing God. to ever exist. So dumb. Why do you need... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need something that works and is effective and is proven... When you could have something new and interesting. <laughs> hey guys, I got a new way to solve the, uh, it's in LA, right? The LA traffic problem, you know, it takes forever. It takes like half an hour to get somewhere. It would take you like two minutes otherwise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add basically another lane only accessible to electric cars. And when I say lane, I mean lane, singular, no passing. It's just a little underground tunnel. And uh, 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 there's like two of them. So uh, it's really helpful if you're trying to go from this specific place to this specific place and you uh, have a Tesla and uh, you want to drive your car down a little tunnel. And um, yeah, one billion Maybe dollars, by the way. that's why they're making Teslas more angular is so that they can act as a ramp for <laughs> Tesla coming the opposite direction down the <laughs> tunnel. Get well, over each so other like a, like a little, like, you know, like the little seesaw fancy obstacle things, like, that you, you do you know what I'm, like a little yeah. dog walks over. <laughs> yeah. That would be really funny. Yo, new way to solve congestion. Just, uh, have drive traffic drive, drive each at each other. other. <laughs> Taken our hints from Mario Kart. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 you had some notes. I did have notes. Okay. Um, yes, I took notes in a responsible time period. Uh, one hour before we started recording. Okay, so actually owning a car. Do you own a car, Kate? Um, it depends on your definition of owning. Okay, so technically. <laughs> So, my I mean, name it's... is on the car. My parents pay for most things, thankfully. Um, so, kind of, yes, I have a car, let's say, that I'm able to drive. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm in a very similar boat. Okay. Well, actually, it's it's a Ford, but... Ooh. 
yeah. It's an escape. That seems like a good thing to have, you know, people helping you pay for because average annual cost of owning and operating a car as of something something 2022 is ten thousand seven hundred twenty eight dollars a year and eight hundred ninety four dollars per month, which is like an obscene amount of money. That's, That's ridiculous. Like, what's I average did income like forty fifty thousand? That, that high. It is insane, dude. That's like twenty five percent of your when money. You, when you talk about average income being, it's something like fifty three thousand a year. That's average income. Um, most uh, average meaning including the people who make a ton of money. I don't know and exactly. So, and so, if you're, if you're looking at like yeah. the median income, so like if you put um, the income of everybody in a list from biggest to smallest, and then picked the one in the middle, it's actually closer to about thirty thirty six thousand. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. And so, um, meaning that half of people are making more than that, and half of people are making less than that. Okay, got you. Yeah, that's kind of. As, as opposed to mean, which is if you took everybody's income and then distributed it evenly, everyone would be making. Yeah, that makes sense. I learned yeah. about this yesterday in my uh, basically, um, I don't know how to call it. Stats for wimps. Yeah, basically stats for wim- wimps. Math 101. Take Math 101. <laughs> it is so worth oh, it if that, you don't want to do oh, STEM. Oh, is that the, the art of mathematics? Art of Math Thinking. It is an amazing class. Shout out so to Miss uh, Durand, I think. I'm really bad with names. Super um, fun. You're so, in yeah. Math 101. I'm in Math 490. <laughs> We're not so different, you and I. Oh, it's Math 490. Uh, symbolic logic. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> it doesn't actually have numbers. Yo. Oh, is that like a logic class yeah okay yeah that's why it's called symbolic logic i enjoy logic when you're doing logic and math 101 i was having a really good time then we got to like um probability and i stopped paying attention i played chess and did homework and then just did all the class assignments and kind of checked out fun fact i am a math tutor really yeah like legit i love tutoring for stats no, I'm genuinely like dumb about it. I like tutoring for sex. <laughs> like, I would, I would not be surprised with myself if I ended up teaching statistics at like a community college or undergraduate level. Do you get paid for tutoring? Not usually. Dang. I okay. usually just do it for the hell of it. Like um, impromptu, impromptu math tutoring. I come, t- come downstairs to get a, I don't know, get some cheese its or whatever. And there's someone sobbing at the kitchen table. Oh, got you. And I'm like, help. <laughs> time, um, time to do some impromptu math tutoring. I get that. Um, I am Like, I could get paid if I wanted to, but then I'd have to be, like, formal about it. Like, it that's, would be scheduled. Should just go around campus, like stalk the library, look for people that are upset, and just <laughs> shake them down for money. <laughs> Isn't that what the university already does? So true. Speaking of shaking people down for money, smooth transition into car dealerships. So much fun. <laughs> Very smooth transition. Yes. Um, See someone who looks upset. Figure out how you can fleece them. Exactly. I was. I was reading about like car dealership tactics and it's like wild i also had a co-worker who used to be a car salesman at a used car lot and man like it's, he made a lot of money but he said it was just like depressing and incredibly boring like he would work for an hour and then he would go into a back room and sleep on a hammock for seven hours which sounds like a dream job but dude i just could not do that like there's just so much weird stuff because, you know, there's, like, the stereotype of the used car salesman. But right, like, like the total sleaze bag. Like, yeah, buddy, uh, this will be a uh, uh, What you really need, you really need the tinted, <laughs> tinted windows. The tinted windows, gotta stick those on there. Uh, so, okay, here's the agreed upon Heated price. Heated seats. Uh, you you like wanna... a warm mass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I can put in the sunroof for an extra uh, $250. Uh, but Look, yeah. you're really going to regret it if a year from now the moon is beautiful. It's a clear clear sky full moon. 
and you don't have a moon roof. What's the difference like, between a sunroof be and a moon yourself. roof? Is there a difference? Yeah, it's about two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was looking at, like, luxury cars <laughs> that were made last year, and all of them had, like, listed, like, moonroof. And I was like, what? What's what? What's a moonroof? I, I think a moonroof is doesn't open, but a sunroof can open. Okay, so it's basically just a worse sunroof that they're <laughs> making you pay more for. Maybe. I think they're also usually... Bigger, or like maybe it's that there's one in the. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Okay, so one thing I did talk about on my other podcast is the Resnavi Vengeance. Now this thing, piece piece of just art. So this thing goes will set you back about two hundred grand. Okay. Very nice car. Um, I discovered it through a TikTok page. Um, that was like a mom TikTok page. Like Mark, she basically like reviews cars for like suburban moms. So like that's the so that's the audience. Suburban moms do some of are are some of the weirdest luxury consumers. Oh, you think this it's, is weird? It's like you wanna you wanna you wanna spend outside your means. Dude, so this thing's two hundred thousand, but 200, there's a hundred and fifty. And it's a vehicle. It's a vehicle. It's a vehicle. And there's also, I believe, it's I think it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar package, which I'll talk about. So she's like, okay, moms, here's here's this vehicle. This will be great for picking up your kids from the mall, picking them up from soccer practice. It's this huge, just, like, hulking, like, four-wheel, like, Hummer-looking thing. So what thing. I'm picturing in my mind is, like, if you crossed a Jeep with a limo and Imagine an SUV. Imagine a PMC vehicle. Okay. <laughs> All right, so she's, and she's like sure going through all the this. she's going through all the she's going through all the features, and she's just like, "All right, so to start off, we got electrified door handles, and then she opens it up, and she's like, "All right, here's all the switches. Um, this one sprays pepper spray out of the windows. Uh, here you got Bro, your you're smoke. a suburban <laughs> mom. Here you got your uh, smoke How do you screen even, button. You live so deep into a, a suburban cookie cutter neighborhood." That the only possible way to get to your house is if you either if A, you already have a vehicle, <laughs> or B, you walked two and a half hours from the nearest bus stop. Like, who are you expecting to try and get into your car? But it's okay, but it gets better. It gets better because you know, uh, pepper spray, who, oh, you, who tasers the, on your door. Who in handles. the Trader Joe's parking lot? <laughs> Well, you never know. What if you're, like, driving through the Trader Joe's parking lot and someone left, like, I don't know, plastic explosives what on the ground. Left? The Resnavi Vengeance <laughs> has got you covered. That thing has undercarriage explosive protection. And I'm sorry? the trunk has enough room to fit a stroller, so it's perfect if you're trying what? to take are, your baby are you, around. Are you taking your kids to a school being targeted by the U.S. military for its proximity to rebel action? Like... Well, let's say you're taking your kids to um, soccer practice, and there's a, um, let's say, uh, trying to think of some vague military jargon for, um, let's say there's an enemy combatant hiding in the bushes <laughs> along the road. The Reznavi Vengeance has got you covered. This has infrared and night vision. So no matter the time of day, this will be able to pick out um, targets anywhere they are. And if they try to run in the middle of the road to stop you, just plow right through them thanks to that thing's uh cattle guard. Yes, cattle guard. It's this this thing's so funny. I <laughs> I just I don't understand. <laughs> it's also got an intercom, strobe what? lights, just, you what? know, what? a smoke screen. I think I talked about that. <laughs> Bulletproof glass on all the windows, what of kind, course. What kind of what kind of Fast and the Furious <laughs> heist are you getting into with your preschooler strapped in the... What, you're like, okay, Preston, make sure you stay strapped in. Don't let your sister Lakin pull, pull on the tab before you're ready for the grenade to get launched. <laughs> God, but... Oh, yeah. Um, also, the uh, military upgrade kit comes with gas masks in case your kids are exposed to chemical weapons. From my recollection, the only people in the United 
in the United States who are using chemical warfare on civilians and children are police officers. <laughs> so, a little confused about the name of that upgrade. <laughs> is, is it like, or, or is it named the same way like the bomb-proof undercarriage is named? Um, I think they called it the military upgrade package. I, this thing feels like it's supposed to, so it's kind of like a luxury car, but it's also sure like for like mercenaries. That this is in this United States. It is in this United States. This United, not it is like so weird. I don't understand because it's like something that like mercenaries, private military, or like very high profile security would use, but it's currently being marketed to like suburban moms and like rich white dudes who have no need of buying this thing. I just right it's the, so weird for the the suburban mom. Who happens to be um, the 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 hitman's <laughs> wife? Yeah, it's. I just don't understand why you would want those features on a car. Like you're paying like three hundred thousand yeah, dollars. To be come fair, on, that a could, smoke that screen. That could buy at least two years cool. of private school. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just wild to me that there are people out there who would like spend that who I don't have know. that much think... money to spend so so on a more mundane note some of the car upgrades that just confuse me is all the time I see this I see this all the time it's a truck it's a big jacked up truck um, where it's higher than it used to be right mm -hmm. and then it has a drop hitch okay and a drop hitch for when you need to attach a trailer lower than where the hitch is attached Got you. Okay. to the vehicle, right? Except the, the, re the reason you'd have a hitch on the back of a truck would be to tow something. Of course. Right? Because the only time you need to put something on the hitch of, the, of a truck is if it's not going to fit in the bed of the truck. Okay, okay. Right? So you're going to tow something. Obviously, right? yeah. Except... The one of the things that that's important in towing is like the towing capacity, right? right? So how heavy of a thing you can pull, and there are different things that can compromise your towing capacity, right? And and one of those things is a drop hitch. Oh, I see where this is going. So why would you get a truck and put a hitch on it? knowing that you're going to use it to tow things and then jack it up and get a drop hitch. <laughs> this is just one of those things where it's like such a, just one of those pet peeves where it's like it just fills me with rage. I'm like, it's so nonsensical. It's so impractical. It's so irrational. Why would you do that? Well, you don't, why, why would you do that? You don't need to do that. Right? Like, if you're if you're good, why would you why would you do that? Of course, people are so weird about their trucks. And it's like it's always like, like a, a I don't know, it's like a one fifty super duty, right? And it's like okay, the reason you would get a super duty is because you want to increase the towing capacity. Clear, clearly, you're not worried about the towing capacity. <laughs> You don't even have mud flaps on your back. You don't. It's a single back wheel. This isn't a dually. You're not serious about your towing capacity. Why are you driving around like this? I really don't understand. Like, you should just get a jacked up little Prius. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the fascination with like flexing cars. Like, it's so weird. And like the like the chrome plated rims or whatever. And it's like, I don't know. Like, I guess if it looks cool, but, like, I like, don't know. Like, my experience with with trucks is I've, I've done some minor car repairs on the farm truck. Of course. Which is the type of car where you're, like, pat, pat on the, the side of the bed of the truck, and it kind of goes clunk. <laughs> and then a piece of rust about the size of a, I don't know, a phone drops down from the bottom. Okay, okay. Right? Or... Or maybe you're fancy. Maybe you've got, like, an, a nice newer truck, and it's for truck-using purposes. Do you know where you put, like, the money for 
your fancy upgrades. It's not in chrome plated rims. It's in the 110 volt plugs in the cab so you can recharge your cordless drill. I see. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't, I don't just. Like, it baffles me. I understand it's that it's just to like look cool and flex. And I personally don't really find having cool cars like that big of a deal. No, like, but if I, I see someone that's like a, a super difference. expensive car, I'm just like, okay, cool. And I don't care. Like, that's crazy. Like, one of my friends has a Mustang, and I'm just like, that's crazy, I think there man. Was, I remember little... when I was like 17, someone, there was a, a car on a route that I fairly regularly drove that was someone was selling a thunderbird this like cranberry red thunder it was beautiful that's it was the most beautiful car i've ever seen in my entire life i still think about that car there are very like i don't have I, I don't have anything against i like good looking cars i just think like, it's like weird so... to like <laughs> stake your sense of self-worth like see on a i do car. you know typically like the stereotype is like the person yells out their car and shouts a compliment i like to compliment people's cars sometimes like when you can tell that like like if someone has like an electric yellow car that thing is their baby you know it <laughs> no one gets no one gets their their fun car in banana yellow if if it's not for them like that isn't something you do for other people that's something you do for yourself and so it doesn't i don't do this a lot but just occasionally you know i'll be i'll, I'll see someone with you know a real fun car and i'll lean out my window <laughs> when they're at like the <laughs> gas station or whatever and i'll be like dude i fucking love your car and it's always real fun cuz no one expects it to go that way Sometimes cars are just so weird. Like, there's a car I know of um, that the only way to access the car battery is if you remove one of the front tires. Bro, oh, I think I've seen those. That's right? so weird. It's yeah. so, so weird. Or there's cars where the engine is in the... Not many these days. But it used to be more common the engine would be in the back and the trunk would be in the hood. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Yes. I forgot about that. Ugh, I, I hate that. Or, like, other weird... Like, electric vehicles are generally good at doing... Um, it's the... You'd, you'd hear it maybe referred to as the horizontal. So, like, you might say that, ooh, this convertible, it's really good for zipping around the back roads. It can do 1G horizontal. Okay. And so that's talking about its ability to go around corners. Gotcha. Fast and tight without, like, tipping over the way a Jeep would. Okay. Uh, and that's because electric vehicles have a lower center of gravity. That's interesting. And so, like, you'd think that, like, you could utilize some of those cool facts about cars, right, and these different cool ways that you can arrange cars to be, like, clever about it and to be fun about it. Mm -hmm. But apparently Americans are a really awful market to try and sell cars to. <laughs> Because some of the things that do really well in, like, European cars yeah. do so badly in American cars. Like, the Europeans, they're like, this car is quiet and efficient. And the Europeans are like, yes, I love that. And the Americans are like, um, excuse me. <laughs> and so, because of this, there's this whole industry among engineers that are special types of sound engineers who engineer the sounds of when your engine starts, the way your car door slams. Of course. These sounds are deliberately engineered. Yeah. Like, and this is, this is a big deal because people will trick themselves so much, right? Like, if, if you're for tractor, for example, if you give someone two tractors to drive and one of them is weaker but has a good grumble. <laughs> and the other one is more powerful, but quieter. Everyone will be like, yeah, the, the grumbly, grumbly one, that was definitely the more powerful of the two. And so this is kind of a mentality that's in, 
what's what's infiltrated like the entire American market for cars. Interesting. And so people are like, no, I don't want a quiet car. I want a loud car that guzzles gas. <laughs> I do know that with some newer cars, they got them so quiet that they were like, okay, uh, we need to fix this. Yeah, How it's do like we dangerous. fix this? And they were like, okay, uh, what if we just uh, uh, play engine sounds over the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> over the oh, that's speakers? So funny. Which is really funny. And yeah, like. That's so good. It's really funny. It's so good. I do like that. That does. You know what? That does the opposite of grinds my gears. That What's tickle that? tickles my fancy. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if only they could do that for other noises. Like, engineer other noises that way. Like, what if the toilet flushed completely <laughs> silently? <laughs> and a little speed. Like, you know the like, fancy Japanese toilets that yeah. are like, in have an A, right? So you flush the toilet, and the toilet itself is completely silent. Yeah. But... <laughs> There's a little speaker that plays a flushing noise. <laughs> Bro, do you think Americans would start like demanding louder noises on their toilets? Like they just gotta like have like an extra little spot in the toilet that like puts water through it and its only purpose is to make really loud like gurgling noises whenever <laughs> you flush. A fun thing to learn about like one of your parents is like when you get to be like a young adult and they start treating you like a young adult, like like I was talking about, like with my dad in cars, he'll be like, "Yeah, have you ever done a burn? You've never. What do you mean you've never done a burnout? <laughs> We're fixing that. Like one one that one minute you're just generally too. chatting with your dad, and the next you find out that he and his friend he had a friend when he was in high school who worked at a mechanic shop, and they would all go there after school, um, and take the cars off of their own, <laughs> oh the God. tires off of their own cars." and put on the old ones that customers had just gotten rid of and do burnouts until the tires, like, completely <laughs> disintegrated. Oh, my and God. And then put their own tires back on and go home. Oh, my God. That's so funny. <laughs> it's like car people. So true. I, I mean, that's funny. I respect that. I mean, like, burnouts, you know, as long as you're not doing it at the Walmart parking lot, like some kind of nerd... My dad used to do them in front of my mom's house when he would <laughs> go visit. Because they, they were high school sweethearts. Of course. And so he'd be like 17, 18, leave burnouts in front of her. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Uh, really, really make her like me if I uh, do a burnout in front of her house. I don't know. I <laughs> Doing donuts seems very cool. Donuts? Mm hmm. Donuts. Donuts. There's, there's a concept of like defensive driving. Or, like, you can take a defensive driving course, go learn how to safely do donuts. <laughs> well, we're, we're, you, you mentioned earlier that you consider yourself to be a fairly careful driver. Yes. Um, this is Illinois. And so when you're trying to be a safe, careful driver, something you have to consider is driving on snow. Of course. And on, on ice. I grew up rurally. We often did not have the luxury of well-plowed streets and so sometimes you just start fishtailing right yeah and you, you gotta you gotta know how to how to deal with that right you gotta know which which way do you turn your wheel if you're fishtailing what i do you, can't what do say you do? i fishtailed all i remember from driver's ed is you need to like turn into the fishtail and then turn back the other way or something but you know yeah, don't that's... don't fight it too much otherwise you kind of just you know in a little circle right spin like yourself guy. out yeah do you drive your your car around like here around campus generally or I no i never drive it around campus i walk whenever i can i do have to like drive my but car like, once when a you're, week so the battery when you're, doesn't die when you're on campus during the school year um, do you go places much i try to go somewhere like once a week even though it's just like taco bell or something <laughs> because i learned the hard way that you have to drive your car um otherwise the battery dies yeah Oh. <laughs> that happened like the first positive week of school. Positive to positive and negative to ground. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm such an expert on car batteries. I touched both terminals at the same time. I was just like, this thing's just completely Wait, like dead. Legit? I'm wasting. Yes. Did you electrocute yourself? No, and it was also plugged into a car oh. battery charger. 
turned on. <laughs> I was just like, this thing's completely dead, isn't it? Yep, seems pretty dead. Have you ever electrocuted <laughs> yourself? Um, one of my earlier memories is me sticking my fingers in a light bulb socket. What about more recently? Um, uh, more recently, I extremely minor, like plugging in my charger at night. It was like between my bed and the wall, and I was kind of oh, just, just like you know, like one of those scrambling little... around, sticking it in there, and yeah. I was like feeling out my feeling out for the plug, and I was just like, okay. I keep missing this, so I'm going to feel where the plug is and plug in it at the same time, and I shocked myself a little bit. That was kind of funny. <laughs> when I was in high school, I was on the robotics team. You know, when high schoolers get bored, and they're the type of high schoolers who are on the robotics team, hanging out where the robotics team does their stuff, the kind of stuff you, you come up to to become on board looks a lot like figuring out that... Um, one of the school computers, like if you touch it in a certain place, it's a little tingly. And if you touch two, it's like more tingly. And so you, <laughs> you all hook up six of them. Oh, my God. And then hold on to it like a pair of handlebars and the muscles in your arms are twitching. Yeah, that genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have um, never deliberately... Never Shocked. deliberately Actu electrocuted yourself. Actually, when I was sticking my fingers in the light bulb socket, I was. I was like, yo, this feels weird. Let me try that again. Right. Because it's like a cool feeling, you know? So do I need to kink shame you now or? Um, apparently, uh, most auto manufacturers are planning to update to electric cars. That will be um, interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I know well, something that's, that. that if you look at something that Ford has done pretty recently is they released an aftermarket electric conversion kit more or less okay so you'd be able to take an existing car and convert it from from a, a gas car to an electric car that hurts my brain i don't understand how that would possibly work <laughs> just believe that it does i'm believing because i do know cars work by just exploding things and a piston like pushes things in and then it like you makes know, things you know spin what? really hard. Your, your knowledge of a piston is more than some people. I, I just know, like, the car is, like, making little control explosions, and then it's making the wheels spin. I also don't know how electric cars work. I'm just assuming there's, like, a little electric motor that spins the wheels for me, but that's probably wrong. Unless I'm, like, really close to that. But, yeah, my car knowledge is really bad. I know that, like, um... The brake pad has a little brake pad that sticks on something that rotates in the car, and it can get worn out, and then your brakes don't work. I know how to replace a car battery. Um, yeah, that's 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 about it. Sorry, I found I found an article about electric the the their whatever their Ford Performance Illuminator. That's with an e illuminator. <laughs> electric crate motor. Okay. Um, it's the same motor that's in Ford's 2021 Mustang Mach E GT Performance Edition, um, but it's just under four thousand dollars, and the idea is that you could buy it and then put it into an existing car. And so um, the one they unveiled specially was a. 1978 F100 pickup that had been electrified with that aftermarket conversion motor. Interesting. Um, do you know how electric cars work? I know there's the battery that's mined with mm -hmm. child labor mm -hmm. and then it mm -hmm. somehow makes the wheels spin and mm -hmm. I don't get that. No, that's pretty much the whole story. Oh, it, it's just little motors that, okay. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> I am. I do not know very much about electric motors. I don't know. That's. Have you? Do you know what I'm talking about? If I say a bristle bot, bristle bot. <sighs> I know what a bot is, and I don't know what a bristle is. Are they connected? It's, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's basically the dumbest, tiniest little robot possible, where you take more or less the head of a toothbrush. Okay. Or if you're feeling fancy, a bigger brush, and you. Put a button battery on it. Okay. And you put a little um, vibrating motor that works by it. It spins round and round, mm -hmm. but instead of being through the center of something, it's lopsided, so gotcha. that way it kind of clunks around. That's that's what makes it vibrate. Okay. Um, 
and then you try and design like little accessories for the brush so that way when the motor's on it can go down like a little racetrack wait oh okay 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 for some reason i was thinking this was something you're gonna use to clean out the inside of your like car like if gunk was building up and i was just imagining some guy just like yeah uh so here's like 30 toothbrush heads that i've jury rigged up some batteries i'm just gonna shove these in the exhaust pipe and let them uh get in there and do work you know but yeah that makes a, a bit more sense i don't know what could you what would be funny to put an exhaust pipe well not much <laughs> um, on account of stopping up the exhaust pipe is a good way to cause bigger problems but if i just fill someone's exhaust pipe with cement what happens explosion 100 percent guarantee <laughs> <laughs> i remember there was a prank on campus where someone like one of the frat guys put spaghetti on someone's car and spaghetti has stuff that apparently eats through like car paint so like the car had like what? spaghetti designs on it <laughs> and apparently that guy uh, was involved in an incident where he was sent to the hospital. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I don't remember the frat or who did it or any details, but that's just what I've heard. That's just hearsay. Um, that's a phenomenal little rumor you've given me. But honestly, like, boring car, monotone, you just got some paint on there, and you just got a bunch of little squiggly lines and designs on it, like... That's pretty cool. I like that. Cool. I like fun cars. Yeah. People yeah, should you're... be more fun about it. Yeah, they're going to be like, yo, where'd you get the uh, custom paint job? That looks cool as hell. Would that rust, though? Yeah, probably. That's one of the good functions of car paint. But you could put probably a um, some sort of a clear coat, coat sealant over top if you wanted to preserve the design. As you should. As you should. I wonder if I can find that car. Well, okay. Follow-up question, then. Have you ever seen a really cool looking car? Um, with like a. Okay, so ex excluding the orange car with the black stripe. Oh, that car was just fine, honestly. Did you. Have you seen any cars with like a really cool paint job? Hmm. I always find it amusing. I saw once um, one of like the ladybug cars that was red with black polka dots. I don't think and I've ever really delightful. seen a cool paint job. The only cars that I really like and think are funny is when someone, like, I've seen loses some... a door in a traffic accident and <laughs> they have to get another door. I always think that's funny as hell. Um, I also think it's really cool when, like, people get their cars really dinged up, but they don't want to, like, repair it. Mm -hmm. So, like, he'll just drive past someone and their window is just, like, made out of, like, scotch tape. <laughs> And there was someone driving around campus that just had their, like, rear bumper, like, hanging on the ground. Like, I just find that stuff really funny. Like, oh, want to hear a really interesting factoid about shatterproof glass used in car windshields? Sure. So the story goes like, so I had a book as a kid called Mistakes That Worked. Um, and it was about accidental inventions. Okay. And so more or less, this chemist guy had been working on his whatever chemistry stuff he was trying to do. And he had like one of those funky little flasks that he neglected to wash out after pouring whatever was in it out of it. And so it ended up kind of drying into a thin plastic inner lining. Okay. Which he wasn't really paying attention to until he knocked it off of his little work table and it shattered, but it held its shape. Interesting. And he was like, oh my God, this is so convenient. <laughs> I don't have to go track down all of the little shattered pieces of glass. I love that. That's actually, there's a little plastic liner on the inside of cans of soda. Oh, yeah. Which is just kind of, like, I, I understand it, but I don't like it. I, I understand that, but honestly, it's probably better that, like, your drink isn't in contact with metal constantly. Well, and a big part of that is the acidity. Very true. There's a reason that uh, lead acid batteries are lead acid, and that's because the, the lead and the acid interact. Got a, got very, a scientific I love lead. But, uh, very scientific explanation there. The Coke can, like, sound design, you know, the... Yeah. Yeah, that's another example of, like, intentional sound design. Um, it's a very nice noise, I think. It was a really nice noise, and I remember that it was, like, intentionally designed because in Titanfall 2, the kill sound is just that sped up and with, like, a bit of, like, bass added to it, and I don't know. That's funny. Is it satisfying? 
It is extremely satisfying. It's like the best. I, like, I believe it. It's really funny. Um, I, I just like the noise. Um, could we could we insert it into the I recording? I could insert it in post? post. Hey, check this okay. out. Uh, yeah, but don't get your a, hopes up. That yeah, that don't works. get your hopes up. Yeah, um, it depends on how lazy I'm feeling. I mean, I've got lots of noises on my mind, like at all times. I think that um, it's always funny in sound sound design what sounds are just never redesigned, like the classic Wilhelm scream, right? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. Um, There's a really generic the, like people like clamoring and crying that I think was used as um, a sound in Civilization Four when you captured enemy city. And, like, I'll just be, like, watching a movie, and I'll just be, like... <laughs> and, like, a crowd of, like, people some yelling, people, and I'll just be, people, like, oh, that's funny. Some people are really good at adding vocal effects to their voice, just, like, live. I saw a really weird one. Like, whatever the wibbly voice. Whoa, whoa, I'm just a whittle, whittle, I'm just a whittle guy, I'm just a whittle guy, I'm trying so hard. If you ever do that again, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> You got any vocal tricks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can laugh at myself so hard that I cry. That's definitely, definitely top ten. Um, I can talk like this. That's pretty good, man. Pretty good, yeah. Ooh, also, also fairly, fairly recent. This is from January twelfth. Um, ejective consonants in English. Um. Why do English speakers pronounce k like that? And so it's basically about how, um, yeah, it's, in, it's called an ejective consonant. And so if I ended a statement like, well, p, or, I don't know, <laughs> I'm trying to think of words that... Oh, like you turn like well yeah, to like, well? Yeah, like, uh, well, uh, no, just words that end in like a P or a K. Is that unusual? It's oh, I mean, just a little bit. It has to do with emphasizing the word that comes after that doesn't naturally emphasize itself. Okay, okay. <clears throat> it's like one of those inflections. Got you. That you can add. We need like to do a really esoteric understanding. Ah, uh, I got you. We need to do an episode on English. English. There's so much you can talk about, like. I was in Spanish today, and I was just like, man, these two words are, like, so similar. That's, like, garbage. Like, the only difference is the accent. That's dumb. I remember that, like, well has, like, five different meanings, all of them completely distinct, and it's like, man. Well, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> well, the uh, well is, uh, you know, not doing too great, and it's just like God. <laughs> Let's see. Um... I think that's about all I prepared to talk about. I'm the crumpling noise you're hearing in the mic is me trying to find where I wrote down I the name of our show song. so I can do the outro. All right. Thank you for listening to Don't Get Your Hopes Up. We're gonna return. Um, hopefully, you hopefully next too week. Underwhelmed. I, oh man. Um, next week. Let me tell you, this episode it's gonna be uh, phenomenal exemplary that's not what i was gonna say bad <laughs> you know it's it's best to temper your expectations always remember don't get your hopes up we'll be back within a time frame of whenever i finish editing um <laughs> see you guys sometime probably later than one week bye